Apple may be on its way to lead in the ARM-based laptop market. According to new data from research firm Strategy Analytics, Apple, MediaTek, and Qualcomm are set to capture the top three shares of revenue in the ARM-based laptop processor market this year. Well, for Qualcomm, they might as well take the advantage of this market, seeing that every Android phone manufacturer wants to build their own chips. What's up, everyone? SK here. In today's episode, we'll look at the impact of ARM-based CPUs in laptops since the introduction of the M1 chips by Apple and why they actually matter. When Apple first launched their M1 ARM-based MacBooks, the internet marked this move, especially the PC fans that perceive Apple products as overpriced in comparison to what is out there in the market. People were not buying into the idea. Apple even made it worse with their graphs during the presentation. That just didn't make sense. However, as soon as reviewers got their hands on the M1 Max, it changed everything. Now, if you're wondering what the heck is an M1 ARM-based CPU, well, let's just expand on it. Mobile phones use ARM CPUs, sometimes referred as chips, while traditional personal computers use x86 CPUs offered by Intel and AMD. It is no surprise that your current smartphone might be more powerful than your laptop or desktop. In the recent years, phones have been getting better in processing power and efficiency. This is made possible through optimizing the operating system on the phone. Cell phone manufacturers have been testing the possibility of replacing desktops with mobile phones or tablets. While that didn't work out quite well for tablet market, but Microsoft saw it through. Samsung DeX is another iteration that has proved that mobile phone CPUs might be powerful enough to run on a simulation of a desktop. It is worth noting that Apple is not the first company to develop an ARM CPU. These actually date back to 1985. So what exactly is an ARM CPU? And how does it differ from an x86 normal desktop CPU? The central processing unit, the CPU, is the brains of your device, but not as smart as the human brain because a CPU only works when given a very specific instruction, suitably called an instruction set, which tells the processor to move data between the registers and the memory or to perform a calculation using a specific execution unit, such as multiplication or subtraction, because computers really run between ones and zeros. ARM is RISC, which stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing, while x86 is CISC, which stands for Complex Instruction Set Computing. ARM's CPU instructions are reasonably atomic, with a very close correlation between the number of instructions and micro ops. CISC, by comparison, offers more instructions, many of which execute multiple operations. This leads to higher or better computing performance, but requires a lot more power consumption decoding these complex instructions. The efficiency of the ARM CPUs was discovered by mistake by a computer engineer. He was testing the CPU and it showed very low levels of power consumptions, only to discover that it was running a set of instructions while not connected to a power supply. As much as this sounds like an incredible discovery, the ARM CPUs were just not powerful enough to run on personal computers. Apple's vision for using ARM CPUs dates back to 1991 with the development of PowerPC. PowerPC CPUs were developed by Apple, IBM, and Motorola, and they were also based on RISC. However, they were not as powerful as Intel CPUs. IBM was not investing in the R&D as Intel did. This alliance between Apple, IBM, and Motorola was costing IBM a lot as they were not getting enough out of it. So in 2005, Steve Jobs announced that Apple PC would move to Intel CPUs. Apple launched the first iPhone in 2007. And through the success of the iPhone, this gave Apple enough financial resources to go back to the drawing board 
to continue where it left off with Power PC, without partners of course, but now concentrating on mobile CPUs meant for the iPhone and iPads. Before the release of the first iPhone, Apple approached Intel to develop a mobile CPU. Intel didn't have enough confidence in the mobile space, but they were not the only ones. In fact, the industry highly doubted that Apple will succeed in the mobile space market. Steve, let me ask you about uh, the iPhone and the Zune, if, if I may. The Zune uh, was getting some traction, then Steve Jobs goes to Macworld and he, he pulls out this iPhone. What was your first reaction when you saw that? $500 <laughs> fully subsidized with a plan? I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world, and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. So without a pod name CPUs, Apple first contracted Samsung to manufacture chips before deciding to design their own ARM chips. When the iPhone 6S launched, Apple split production of chips between Samsung and TSMC. However, the iPhone 6S also showed that models with the TSMC chip ran cooler and offered better battery life than those with the Samsung chip. Apple shifted manufacturing solely to TSMC with the iPhone 7. Plus, Samsung and Apple were in and out of court over patent issues. What came as a shock is how quickly Apple managed to catch up with Intel chips in performance. But the difference being that Apple chip was using 5 watts in comparison to 130 watts required for Intel chips. The comparison between a smartphone chip to a desktop chip clearly holds no purpose until you start comparing which one is more faster at operating the same function. One example, video rendering. Having discovered so much power in a mobile chip, it made complete sense for Apple to start testing their own mobile chips in laptops. The results? So incredible that the MacBook Air is more powerful than the i9 MacBook Pro, which was Apple's best performing laptop. But the MacBook Air cost only 999 compared to the 2399 on the i9 MacBook Pro. Apple's aim at controlling and owning primary technology is another reason behind this move. Apple is able to outsource manufacturing of its 5 nanometer chip to Asian companies, while Intel has been having difficulties with production of its 10 nanometer lately. There were other problems reported on the Macs running Intel chips, such as overheating issues on the i9 MacBook Pro. Having control of both the software and hardware puts Apple at a competitive advantage and could save them an estimated $2.5 billion per year on cost of production. But I don't see Apple dropping prices on products even further down. One of the selling key points of the M1 is the efficiency of the chip. The ability to carry a Mac so powerful as close to a gaming laptop but consumes significantly less power slimmer in design, and a single charge that can last you throughout the day. This is uncommon on a powerful laptop. This marks a leap in tech and how consumers interact with laptops going forward. Some may claim that maybe consumers do not need all of this power that the Macs claim to have. But wouldn't everyone benefit if Mercedes-Benz started manufacturing affordable cars for a lower class while keeping the same quality. This year marked the end of the 15-year relationship between Intel and Apple, as far as MacBooks are concerned. Apple launched the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips alongside their redesigned MacBook Pros. Important to note that looking at the price of these MacBooks, they are targeting professionals in film, coding, or high-end users that may require that amount of power. These chips are so powerful to a point where Apple is comparing them with high-spec gaming laptops. If you think the M1 is impressive, Apple claims four times better graphics over the already impressive M1. And to top it off, Apple brought back ports to the MacBook Pros, which clearly was kind of a greedy for them to get rid of all the important ports and make profit out of selling dongles. 
I would dive deeper into the specifications of the new MacBooks, but for simplicity, let's just say they look promising and could be the best to come out of 2021. And looking forward to the updated designs on the MacBook Air and Mac Mini. According to Apple Insider, Samsung and Intel are hoping to manufacture Apple chips should demand exceed the capabilities of the TSMC company. Across iPhones, iPods, TV, watch, speakers, laptops, desktops, Apple's ability with what they do with the ecosystem is unmatched. With Apple leading this type of tech, it means we could see other manufacturers such as Xiaomi, Samsung, Huawei, and more perfecting advancements in using ARM CPUs for lower end and affordable laptops. This is definitely not going to be the end. For Intel or AMD, they still have a huge market share and not everyone is a fan of Apple MacBooks. And if possible, Intel might introduce a more powerful ARM CPU for Windows market to challenge the Apple one. At the end of this, we as consumers will benefit from all of this race. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to sub and give a thumbs up. Cheers.